Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Western Stories. Original air date's August 25th, 1956, and it's going to be Romance's rendition of The Caddis Fly. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. Now, from Hollywood, Romance. Romance, transcribed stories of love and adventure, of comedy and crisis, of conflict and human emotion. Today, a story which proves that there are times when an ill wind can blow, at least for some people, a certain amount of good. It is written by Charles B. Smith and stars Victor Perrin and Sam Edwards in The Caddis Fly. <laughs> Mississippi Delta, they got what's called the caddis fly. Now, if you don't know what a caddis fly is, well, it's about the most pestiferous insect that ever grew wings. They come up out of the backwaters of the river, millions of them all at once. And when they get tired of flying, they light. And if they happen to light in a town, well, the folks there sure got misery. Yes, sir, there's nothing so bad as opening your mouth to talk and getting a bunch of flies in it before you get a word out. But some folks claim there's good in everything, even a swarm of flies. I reckon that's how my brother Wiley Burris felt the year we went down to Jeffersonville to visit his Uncle Luther. Well, the afternoon we crossed over the Jefferson County line, a car started steaming, so we stopped at the first house we seen and started around to the back looking for water. You reckon anybody's to home here? Ma! Oh, where'd you put my dress? Somebody is. Wiley. Yeah, boy. <clears throat> ah, pardon us, ma'am. Oh, 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 oh. Well, I reckon we better oh, forget oh. that water. Yep. Oh, she was Please, a mighty pretty me. sight. What? Yeah. Hey, you. You two boys. You just hold up right where you at. Wiley. Better do like he says. He's carrying a shotgun. Now then, what are you two doing sneaking around here like a couple of low-down peeping toms? Who are you? Well, our name's Burris. I, Burris? I... You kin old Fat Burris and Jefferson do? Yes, sir. He's our Uncle Luther. You don't say. Yes, sir. We're figuring on helping him out at the county fair. Well, you gonna have that contraption of his on the grounds again? You, you mean the whip? Yes, sir. Hmm. The way that thing spins round hard enough to snap man's head off. Wanted me to call an amusement ride. Henry? Henry, you want me to call the sheriff? No, it's all right, Ma. The boys are just... Uh, what do you say you're doing in my backyard? Looking for water. They're looking for water, Ma. Oh. Yeah. Well, you sure give the women folks fright. I guess you know that. Yes, sir. You at the supper yet? No, sir. Well, come inside. As long as you're here, you might as well feed you. <laughs> You care for anything else, Homily? No, thank you, ma'am. I'm about stuffed, Miss Catterball. How long since you seen your uncle, Wiley? Oh, a couple of years. Mm-hmm. He's gained quite a bit of weight since then. You like your coffee now, Mr. Bird? Yes, and that'll be fine. Vicky, will you... Ma, get... how many times do I have to tell you it's Victoria? I ain't a little girl no more. Am I, Mr. Burris? Well, I, I, I... You shouldn't embarrass our guest that way, Victoria. I ain't embarrassing him any more than he embarrassed me. You think I'm a little girl, Mr. Burris? Uh, no, ma'am. I, I wouldn't say you was. Thank you. Now I'll get the coffee. Uh, you gotta excuse how she acts sometimes, Wiley. She just begin to feel her oats. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, sir, I, I reckon so. Yeah. A couple of days ago, she was threatening to enter that contest they're going to have to find the queen of the fair. Any reason why she shouldn't have entered it? 
Yes, there is reason. Well, she's pretty as any girl in Jacksonville. Prettier. Pretty don't have nothing to do with it. Oh, now, Henry. All right, all right. You know it all. But if she'd entered it, she'd have had a heart broken. What? Oh, it's sold up. Cut and dried. Do you understand, woman? It's politics. Mr. Big John Merriweather's politics. Talk about something else. Here you are, Mr. Burris. Thank you. Why, what's everybody looking so glum about? Oh, wasn't nothing. We we was talking about my Uncle Fat. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you know, he used to be a really important man. That's so? What business was he in? Rainmaking. Rainmaking? Yes, sir. Yeah. He was the world's champion rainmaker of the Mississippi Valley. Well, I didn't know that. Oh, he don't talk about it much, Mrs. Catterball. Oh, why not? Well, it's mostly because he was asked to retire. Of course, the way I heard it. You boys don't mind about telling the story, do you? No, sir, I reckon not. Well, about 15, 20 years ago, a town called Willoughby up at Vicksburg was having a terrible drought. So they sent for him. Well, he made it rain all right. Yes, sir. For six days and six nights, it rained hard and steady. Flooded the county, houses floated away, dams broke, and the river rose 30 feet. My gracious. Yes, it did. When it was over, the governor gave him his choice of leaving the state or putting away his rain-making stuff for good. Naturally, he didn't want to leave Mississippi, so he retired. Why, I'd never dreamed he'd led such a life. Yes. Only a few people besides the mayor and the town council who keep sort of a check on him know about it. So don't you women go blabbing it around. We won't. Well, it sure explains something I've been wondering about. What's that? Why, he's important enough to have his name on that entry blank I sent in. Entry blank? Why didn't I tell you, Pa? I'm going to be in the beauty contest tomorrow. And Mr. Fats Burroughs is one of the judges. Well, after the Catterballs got through arguing about Victoria being in that contest, Mr. Catterball cooled down long enough to invite Wiley and me to spend the night. I was sure glad he did, because I was pooped. But a funny thing happened late that night. I woke up, and Wiley wasn't in his bed. Wiley, you think I'm pretty enough to win that contest? Well, I... I ain't never seen any of the other gals in this county, but I don't see how they could be prettier. Well, they're not. That may be one of them. But if the contest is run honest, I'll win it. I really will. You sure want to, don't you? I, I've been planning on it since I was a little girl. Uh, you believe it'll be run fair? Well, sure. After all, your uncle's one of the judges. You'll see that he keeps it honest, won't you? I sure will, Victoria. Wiley, the what? swing makes too much noise. Let's sit on the steps. We were up with the chickens, all of us. Victoria's folks had to get her to the fairgrounds early and... Wiley and me wanted to get started before the road got crowded with farmers going to the town for the doings. As soon as we hit the outskirts of Jeffersonville, we could see the posters and banners. And when we passed through the fairground gates, well, I couldn't help but get excited. The fences had all been whitewashed, and folks were leading the prize stock to the proper stalls. There was hurrying and scurrying, and everybody getting set for the grand opening. Even old Uncle Fat Sleuther sitting out in front of his whip ride was wearing a coat for his occasion. Howdy, Uncle Luther. Sure. Took you a sweet time about getting here, didn't you? We had some car trouble. You know, I shouldn't wonder. Old thing like that. You ought to get a new one. Low home Uncle Luther? Yeah. Had your money, I would get a new one. Boy, you sure ain't changed much. I see you have. Put on a little more weight, ain't you? Wiley, why'd you have to be so... It's all fired mouthy. One of these days, you're going to talk yourself into more trouble than you're worth. Well, come on, help me up. 
I'll show you how to run this contract. Yes, sir. Easy now. Easy. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, got it. Now, there. Let me take your arm. What time does the fair open up, Uncle Luther? In about a half an hour. When's the beauty contest? Starts at 1.30. Where did you hear about a beauty contest? Oh, we heard. Contest. Also heard you was judging it. Is that right? I'm one of them. Now, well, look here. Here, this here sticks the switch that starts and stops this thing. All you gotta do is push it over like this. Yeah. Huh. Looks like a pretty tame ride to me. You eat when you give it full throttle. Well... You boys can do whatever you want to till oh, time to... Oh, howdy, howdy, fast. Oh, <laughs> morning, Mr. Merriweather. Well, we got a nice day for it, didn't we? Yes, sir, sure did. Uh, Mr. Merriweather, I'd like for you to meet my two nephews, Homer Lee and Willie Burr. Oh, please howdy, make me the boys. Burris. Say, uh, fast, I noticed that big lever thing you got there. Uh, that the switch that starts the ride? Yes, sir. Good. I'm sending my daughter over with a photographer to take a picture. Mm. Uh, see that she stands next to that thing like she's uh, here, mm. stopping it up. Yes, yes, sir. It'll be in the afternoon paper announcing she's the queen of the fair. Mm. You understand? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, whatever you say, Mr. Merriwither. <laughs> All right, Pat. Uh... I'll see you. Nice seeing you, boy. Yes, sir. Well, of all the low-down, cheating, thieving, dirty, stinking... Now, what, what's eating you, boy? He's got it all fixed, ain't he? It ain't no contest. It's a shoe-in. Is that right? He's got it all rigged for his daughter to win. Don't, don't say it so loud, Wally. Don't say it so... Uncle Luther, what's happened to you? How can you let him tell you how to vote? Listen, boy. Besides being the head of the fairgrounds committee and the mayor and owning the bank... Hank, Mr. Motherwell's friend of the governor. Who can make you jump a hollering frog. That's right. And before you decide to do any talking about that contest, you think. You hear? Yes, sir. I hear. All right. Now you help me to get up in the ticket box. <laughs> Easy now, there. Oh! Yeah. Now, get behind me and push. Right. Huh? Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Wiley. Hey, Uncle Luther, Wiley, here comes some folks. Oh, oh that'll be Miss Merriweather in the photographer. Now, you remember, Wiley. I remember. Remember. Oh, yes, ma'am. Everything's set and ready for you, Miss Maybell. You just go along with my nephew. This is my nephew, Wiley. Oh, how do, nephew Wiley? Sure. Miss Maybell. Uh, uh, photographer, are yeah. you ready? Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, where should I pose? Well, you're Paul. Said well, for you I'll to log po- one uh, way you're sitting in that ride, Miss Merriweather. Who? In the whip, you mean? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right. Oh, Tennant. Oh, yeah, that's it. You stand by the lever like you're starting it up. Oh, that, 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 that's fine. Uh, already, everybody? Oh, am I posed just right? Oh, that's just fine, Miss Merriweather. Why right, now, then? A hole. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey! Oh! Oh, Mr. Mike! Help! Wiley! Wiley, Burris, you stop it! You hear that? You stop it! Help! Stop it, Mr. Mike! Help! Wiley, Messing it up a little, homie. Oh, oh, yeah. You can't fire me, Uncle Luther. Oh, I quit ten minutes ago. Come on, homie. Oh, Wiley, Wiley, come back. Wiley! Help! Somebody get me down from here. Help! Wiley! 
you can't walk off of that thing running with this man hey! I'm doing it, boy. And if you're coming with me, you better hurry. <laughs> We will return to romance in just a moment. Fine jazz that's creating talk in every corner of the land is at hand every Saturday evening with CBS Radio's upbeat Saturday night program. Top jazz singers and musicians make personal appearances. Listen for jazz at its modern best on CBS Radio Saturday nights. And now for the second act of Romance. Now, I started out to tell you about the caddis fly. Well, I'd never seen one of them before, but I was about to. We were on our way out of the fairgrounds when we spotted Mr. Catterball sitting under a shade tree. Hi, Wiley. Home to leave. What you doing sitting out here? Oh, waiting on the women folks. The inside getting Vicky spruced up for the contest. She sure got a mind set on winning that thing. Hello, boys. Miss Catterball. Hi, Victoria. Home, oh, Lee. Well, Victoria, say hello to Wiley. Wiley. You feeling all right, Vicky? You look like you got a bellyache. Henry Catterball, I swear. Well, she does. She looks mighty pretty to me. Thank you, Wiley. Yeah. Your ma did a good job fixing your... <laughs> Why, Henry, what on earth's the matter with you? <clears throat> bug. What? A b- b- bug. A bug flew in my mouth. Now, look at that thing, will you? And let me see. Oh, Mr. Henry, that ain't no bug. No? No, sir. That's a caddis fly. Oh, caddis fly? That's right. I... There's another one. Oh, Wiley, you don't... Well, think... it's about that time of year. Oh, mercy. Glory be what a mess they'd make of this place. Yeah, wouldn't they just... What are they talking about? Well, the fair, dear. And what had happened to it if a swarm of flies decided... Oh, the... Ma! The caddis flies decided right here there wouldn't be nobody left at the fair. Hey, there's another one. And another. Oh. Mr. Henry, it's about two hours till the contest. Might be you better get inside somewhere. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, where are you boys going to be? Uh, over to Uncle Luther's. Uncle Luther's? That's right. He might have fired me, Homer, but he's still our kin. <laughs> Wiley was sure right about them caddis flies. Just before we reached Uncle Luther's house, a swarm of them as big as a storm cloud and just as black came swooping down out of the sky and spread out over the whole town. Even traveling in the car like we were, you couldn't get away from them. Well, we finally got into the house, and after slamming down the windows and chasing the flies that beat us inside, we started looking for something to eat. That's what we were doing when Uncle Luther walked in. You... Sure, sure got your nerve, Wiley Burris. How'd you get in here? Through a window? You want us to leave? You're my brother's boy, so I can't put you out. But believe me, if you weren't... I know, I know. What's happening out to the fairgrounds, Uncle Mm. Luther? What do you reckon? Folks all left. Soon as all the flies arrived, everything... Shut down. What are they going to do about the beauty contest? Is that all you got on your mind, Wiley? They postponed it. But that ain't going to change a thing. And don't you go getting any ideas at mine. Mr. Mother Merriweather's already so mad at me. I'm lucky I still got my ride out there. You reckon those flies will be here long, Wiley? Oh, it's hard saying. Maybe two, three days, maybe a week. It's up to nature, and sometimes nature moves mighty slow. Well, ain't there no way of getting rid of them? Nope. Boy, I bet if somebody thought of one, that you'd get a nice reward. I sure would. Fairgrounds committee about worried sick. Folks didn't come to town prepared to stay all night. Most of these farmers can't afford to take more than a day off from their crops. Hmm. Yeah. You reckon that committee'd really give a reward if somebody could get rid of them flies? What are you thinking, Wiley? Uh, they got an indoor place where they could hold that beauty contest? Yeah, they got a auditorium. Uh-huh. 
Mm, Wiley, I don't like the look on your face. Uh, who'd be the man to talk to just in case somebody thought he knew a way to do it? Well, uh, Mr. Merriweather. But you ain't... Wiley, where you going? You ain't. To round up those gals so they can hold that contest. <laughs> Of course, we didn't know what Wiley had in mind, but from the way he was sort of smiling to himself, I knew whatever it was would work. Well, Uncle Luther and me ate our lunch, and then I stretched out to take a nap. It must have been a couple of hours later when I woke up to hear him talking. And for the first time since I've known him, Uncle Luther was smiling. You mean to say that Merriweather said it would be all right to do it? That's just what I mean. And if you don't believe me, here it is in writing, signed by him acting as mayor. Now listen. Uh, to use any method possible to relieve this scourge of caddis flies. You hear that? Any method possible. <laughs> you are here. Yes, sir. That's good enough for me. And you'll do it? Yep. You need anything? Nope. Got everything packed away in my chest. All I got to do is get it out. Okay, then. Homer yeah. Lee? Yeah, well, I'm away. Well, get on your feet, boy. Where are we going? To crown us a beauty queen. <laughs> you ever see so many flies in all your life? No, I don't ever want to again. Well, they ain't gonna be with us much longer. What makes you so sure, Wiley? You see. Come on. Come on, run. <laughs> Made it. Boris. Oh, uh, Boris. Uh, are you ready now? Just about, Mr. Merriweather. Oh, I never thought I'd see the day that I'd be agreeing to something like this. But I've done everything you asked me to. All the contestants are waiting backstage, and their families are seated in the auditorium. Well, now, that's just fine. Well, what about Uncle Fats? Isn't he coming? Uh, no, sir. He, uh, he's staying at home this afternoon. Of course, you know, I'm not going to start this contest till you've shown me you can get rid of them flies. Yes, sir, I know. Uh... What is it, Burris? You got some new insecticide, something maybe you learned from the army? No, sir, I wouldn't say it was that exactly. Well, whatever it is, I hope it works. It will. Uh, when's it supposed to start? Almost any time now. Maybe if we stepped over to the window, we might be able to see it start. Oh. Hey. Say, it's gotten dark all of a sudden. Yes, sir, I guess it has. But the flies are still there. They won't be there long. You keep saying that, but I don't see nothing happening. Wiley, what are you... Now, doing? wait a minute, Homer. It should be... It should be right now. Wait! Day in the morning, it's starting to rain. Yes, sir, that's it. Oh, I might just as well call the fair off for this year. Nobody will come in the rain. Why did this... Boris, what did you say? I said that was it, the rain. What? You mean you got it? Facts. That fat uncle of yours, that's who did it, didn't he? You got him to conjuring up the rain, is that right? Admit it, boy. Oh, now, Mr. Merriweather. Don't you Merriweather me. You realize he ain't able to stop it once it starts? You know what that means? I'll have to close down the fairgrounds. Folks will have to get out their boats. Why, well, it'll be raining for days and days. But, Mr. Don't Merriweather... Don't you stop it, me, boy. Forget about that beauty contest, you hear? It's all. Now, you can't do that, Mr. Merriweather. You've got to keep your part of the bargain. Bargain? Yes, sir. And you put it in writing. You said to use any means possible to get rid of the flies. And, well, who ever heard of flies flying around in the rain? Well, Mr. Merriweather kept on screaming, ranting, and raving, but there wasn't nothing he could do. So finally they held a contest, and naturally, because she was the prettiest, and because Wiley had made the deal with Mr. Merriweather that the audience would pick the queen, Victoria won. Well, it stopped raining a couple of weeks later, and a week after that, when the roads were passable again, Wiley and me went on down to New Orleans. Uncle Luther had to go with us, too, because uh, the governor of Mississippi, he banished him from the state. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Romance is produced and directed by Anthony Ellis. Today's story was written by Charles B. Smith. Starred in Canis Fly were Sam Edwards and Victor Perrin. Others in the cast were Gloria Grant, Helen Klebe, Will Wright, John Daner, Sammy Hill, and Joe Kearns. Musical supervision by Jerry Goldsmith. This is Larry Thor inviting you to hear Romance transcribed next week at this same time. Stay tuned for Gunsmoke, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.